Sige. Uh, salamat Sara. Uh, magandang magandang tanghali, magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat. Uh, uh, again, I'm I'm uh, Alvin Mejia from the Wuppertal Institute and today I'll be talking about shared mobility services. So shared e-mobility under the context of uh, let's say the wider concept of uh, new mobility services. Uh, for our international uh, participants, uh, I would like to apologize uh, in advance if I would be switching between uh, English Hello. and Filipino. Hello? Yeah, someone's speaking, sorry. Um, so yeah, just to, to uh, facilitate, siguro para din uh, mas uh, engaging yung aking uh, pag-talk uh, with regards to new mobility services. Um, so again, we are uh, doing this uh, as part of the... Uh, Solutions Plus Project. Sorry, can someone mute the... Hello? Sorry, um, maybe if I can ask our friends from Cleaner Asia to, to mute the participants. Sorry, I'm hearing a lot of noise. Then. Sorry. <clears throat> okay. Um, so we're doing this as part of the Solutions Plus project, which is a global project consisting of more than 40 uh, or 45 consortium members. Um, we're working with the 10 uh, cities globally in terms of accelerating uh, e-mobility concepts. So not just uh, in terms of e-vehicles, but also in terms of operations, uh, as well as the uh, supportive uh, business models, as well as uh, policies. You know? um, and Pasig City is one of our key partners in the project. So what I'm going to talk to you about today it would be uh, focusing on new mobility services um, again um, with a certain emphasis on uh, shared e-mobility uh, i'll just talk through the relevant uh, operations and charging concepts as well as go through some of the potential impacts uh, in terms of the urban environment um, uh, social impacts as uh, some uh, economic impacts as well and then I'll go through some of the uh, examples of uh, different policy responses that have been or are, are being uh, implemented globally. Um, and I leave you with one slide later on um, localizing some of these uh, insights, uh, not just in the case of PASIC, but uh, just yeah, in, in uh, Philippine urban setting in general. So I just, this uh, concept now, it's uh, the, the emerging concept um, that I would be talking about. It's called new mobility services. This is like a common term that's uh, now being adopted. Um, kasama na din po dito, later I have a typology, pero kasama na din dito yung mga shared e-mobility uh, e services natin. Um, but the way it's uh, transforming now in terms of this disruptive uh, concept is that it combines um, sustainable mobility resources. It combines um, digital data platforms and combines the uh, emergent business models that go with the combination of these elements. And the thing is that it, um, while the, the concept is focusing on providing mobility services, we're seeing a lot of integration with other non-mobility sectors later. I'll, I'll have a slide on that. But essentially, for example, it could be in terms of um, sharing mobility resources. So hindi lang po yung sasakyan yung pwedeng i-share. No? Um, pwedeng yung, yung vehicle trip. So kung meron kang sasakyan, pupunta ka from uh, Ortigas to Makati, um, you can share the vehicle trip, the person trip, the vehicle itself. So, kung di mo ginagamit yung sasakyan, iwanan mo, then you, you, know, you share it through the platform. Um, there are also emergent concepts in terms of um, sharing human resources. Uh, a lot of these things are happening in terms of urban logistics na um, merong common um, platform for sharing yung mga, yung mga last mile um, delivery personnel, for example, yung mga nagbabike din, ano? Um, and then parking spaces, so not just the uh, vehicle services, but also infrastructure. And a lot of uh, emerging business models are uh, coming out of this, so we can look into subscription-based, uh, trip-based revenue models, crowd-sourced operations, um, and enabling digital advertising. This is very uh, transformational, service bundling, and it also enables um, yung different uh, nodes natin, ano, kung Kung, kung, um, business to business or business to customer or peer to peer. Um, in, in terms of the platform, it enables crowdsourced data, enables the payment, enables access to different uh, users, to different resources, 
and um, gives a lot of flexibility in terms of planning, in terms of scheduling, in terms of booking, in terms of payment, and also uh, enables the operators to monitor the system um, in, a, in a better way. Uh, just a, a very basic example, uh, e-moped sharing or e, sa atin e-scooter uh, naman tawag natin dito, pero um, e-moped sharing, this is something, uh, for example, this, the project, Solutions Plus project is uh, exploring also in Hanoi. Um, so meron tayong uh, mobility technology would consist of uh, kunyari, electric uh, scooters that, that would be equipped with the uh, um, Internet of Things sensors. So makakapag-usap siya between the vehicles, between the infrastructure, uh, the charging infrastructure, for example, and the users then. No? So alam natin real time nasa yung mga sasakyan, ano yung charge niya, um, ano yung uh, mamamonitor kung ano yung ginawang vehicle kilometers um, and yung, yung trips nung, nung vehicle, for example. <laughs> And in terms of business model, unique value proposition because of the flexibility. Um, again, different revenue models because you can do a lot of the, like uh, uh, digitally based uh, revenue models and it caters to very specific customer segments. And the platform itself, um, you know, you have the, the app user interface, you have the back end that enables the unique service features and business models. Uh, ito po kunyari sa Indonesia yung Gojek. Um, Yung, yung buong system hindi lang sa pag uh, provide ng services so they're integrating them into you know uh, things like uh, food payments etc uh, so it you know yung interaction between um, the mobility and non mobility sectors uh, because it also um, adds value to the uh, the business model itself this is not an exhaustive list po ng uh, different types pero i just wanted to provide an idea Yung sinabi natin kanina, um, different concepts na pwedeng vehicles, pwedeng yung rides, or meron din yung ride sourcing, ito yung parang mga ano natin, um, taxi-like services, mga Ubers, and the likes, mga Grabs. No? Uh, merong mobility as a service uh, concept, which tries to transform um, the thinking na hindi lang, kunyari, sasakay ka ng isang mode, ilipat ka ng mode, Yung mobility as a service in, would want to integrate the different modes all together. So, in for example, in one platform, in one app. So, parang uh, yung sa Google natin, uh, I would like to go from A to B, pero integrated doon na uh, ito yung sasakyan mo, ito yung payment mo, and potentially one payment in one go for, for everything. So, you don't have to think about the modes. It's just about the seam seamless transfer from point A to point B. And yeah, may mga shared parking tayo. Tapos, um, meron din yung mga B2C or um, P2P na different types of models. And you would see here the different types of vehicles and uh, um, yeah, kung, kung yung operations based. Meron akong counting slides mamaya on station based and uh, free floating. So bakit kailangan natin pag-usapan to in terms of uh, urban mobility? Uh, kasi marami pwedeng mangyari in terms of uh, how people move um, when we introduce these kinds of uh, new mobility services, uh, particularly yung mga shared services natin. Kunyari, ride, uh, uh, scenario one, ride, ride sharing. So kung meron ka sasakyan, um, sorry, explain ko lang. Base scenario, meron tatlong tao going from point A to point B. Siguro kunyari, isipin natin from Antipolo to Ortigas. So itong dalawang tao na to, itong dalawang dots na to, na uh, they would be walking and then transfer to a tricycle station. Tapos lipa sila, mag-UV sila, lakad silang konti. Tapos papunta sila ng uh, uh, LRT and then going towards to the office. And the third one is just uh, someone who would drive directly. If we introduce uh, ride sharing, so the, this person here, okay, may app tayo, so the other two persons can say, okay, let's uh, we'll meet you uh, sa gate ng subdivision and then we'll uh, we'll ride together through your vehicle. Um, siguro in in this sense, um, reduction agad ng ng <clears throat> ng vehicle kilometers, but we have to take into consideration that baka may systemic impacts yan na ma incentivize yung mga tao actually to, to buy their own vehicle because they can recover some of the costs through the these types of ride sharing and ride hailing schemes. No? So yung iba, nung nakita natin dati, nung, nung na-introduce yung TNDS uh, regulation, I think merong uh, study na ginawa yung uh, NCTS, I think, yeah. uh, that uh, yeah, the, merong evidence to prove that uh, it actually spurred um, the, the, the buying of additional vehicles to be enrolled in the system. So ganun din, um, pwedeng uh, magkaroon ng impacts in terms of uh, 
kunyari itong second person natin, uh, mag uh, ano siya ng ride hailing na na scooter going to the to the um, MRT station for example. So and this one can actually just ride um, a taxi like service through the ride hailing app. Um, in terms of e-bike sharing, uh, meron din potential impact. So if you provide um, services uh, for these two persons here, they might be enticed to use the bike sharing going to the, for example, the UV station or yung FX natin, um, and then riding the, the train afterwards. So it complements in, in some sense, no, yung ating public transport system. And for the mass, uh, mas integrated lang siya, uh, because again, it's uh, about a seamless transfer uh, as facilitated by the technology from point A to point B, the final destination. There, there could be a lot of different configurations. Ang message lang po dito na yun nga, kailangan natin integrate properly uh, kasi maraming pwedeng maging effects siya. Um, in terms of the typology na potential impacts in uh, relation to mobility, um, pwedeng short term to long term yung, yung different impacts. Um, Activity choice, uh, kung ano yung gagawin kasi kung merong bagong servisyo. Mode choice, kung ano yung kukunin na, na mode, no? na main mode. Yung nakita natin kanina, if it would complement public transport or would it take away from public transport. Pwede rin ma-influensya yung destination choice. Kung maganda yung, kunyari, yung last, uh, last mile uh, shared services dun sa lugar. Kung mag-grow setup between point A to point B, baka isipin mo, okay, dun tayo sa ano kasi mas madaling mag-commute towards the, the end and the root choice. Uh, towards the long term, depende po no, kung, kung isipin natin yung transformational uh, um, scenarios, uh, pwede rin kasi na uh, if these are properly integrated later, uh, magkaroon ng uh, wider impacts in terms of things like residential location choice, work location choice. So it could be a transformational concept as we are seeing in, in um, so for example, dito sa Europe, marami na nangyayari na 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 transformation. So, but for the succeeding slides, I would just uh, probably um, concentrate on, on the, the light electric shared e-mobility kasi ito yung medyo um, uh, potentially maging significant sa Pilipinas. So, kick scooter sharing, this is just a map. Um, hindi siya exhaustive, but you'll see the diffusion. Ito yung mga uh, kick scooter, electric kick scooters that are happening. Sorry, I think there's one already. I checked. Uh, I think there's one that's already up in DGC uh, from last year, I think. Um, and then moped sharing. Uh, I, yeah, this is also a map. These are not e-moped e sharing um, in, in, uh, in particular, but you see a lot of these things as, uh, you know, spring up uh, globally. As well as bike sharing, I think nilagay ko lang ng dots sa Philippines kasi there, I, I know that there are a couple of uh, bike sharing uh, systems that are already up uh, in in the Philippines. Um, so yun nabanggit ko kanina, um, emerging concepts wala pa masyado, pero there has been one um, that has been put up in uh, DGC. Uh, yung bike sharing, I think yung yung sa Pasig matagal naman na yung inyong bike sharing system um, that, that was put up uh, with the support I think with ADB uh, Cleaner Asia during that time, uh, but it was not electric, but nonetheless, the, the concepts would be, you know, uh, similar in that sense. So, um, this is, again, in, in, in terms of emerging concepts, this is what we're trying to do um, with the help of, uh, or in coordination, or in, in collaboration with the Pasig uh, City uh, Transport and uh, Tojo Motors, Cleaner Asia, and others, uh, trying to put up a shared electric vehicle system that would mm, focus primarily in the demo, during the demo, uh, on uh, cargo, urban uh, urban freight applications. So we have the, the flexible electric vans that are being developed together with the, uh, supported by the DOSD. Um, and then we are doing, or, or Toji is also supporting the development of the electric e-quads. Um, that would be the smaller vehicles. And hopefully, you other um, existing electric vehicles, for example, in Philpost can be integrated into the system. So this would be enabled um, through the use of uh, like uh, a user interface and decision support systems for the fleet operators. Biblisan ko po ng konti. E-mobility and NMS, uh, new mobility services, ano ba yung interaction niya? So uh, we think that uh, um, uh, new mobility services can accelerate the diffusion of e-mobility concepts just to put you know, the concepts of you know, e-vehicles on the ground. 
Um, but the use of e vehicles in such schemes can also transform the mobility services provision in terms kasi iba yung advantages or iba yung characteristics na binibigay ng ating mga electric vehicles inherently kasi electric sila in terms of operational cost, in terms of operational characteristics. Um, and it, it provides this uh, unique uh, refueling uh, again na lang natin ganun, na, modalities and can be mutually reinforcing. Um, so example concepts, it could be, again, concentrate tayo dun sa maliliit na mga sasakyan. Um, uh, it could be, you know, in terms of uh, electric uh, bicycles, electric cargo bikes, uh, e-scooters, e-mopeds, or ito, nilagay ko lang yung ating e-quad. It could be in terms of passenger transportation, freight transportation, urban freight, or it could be mixed. Um, naisip ko ilagay yung basic concepts ng operations na station-based versus free-floating. Yung station-based po, ito yung makikita natin kanina, yung may mga, mga dedicated na, na parking areas. Um, and in, in case of e-mobility services, together with the charging stations. Um, but free-floating systems, you would be able to um, operate within a certain uh, region uh, with flexibility. So the station base provides you higher security for the vehicles, for example, easier to manage, less flexibility. Um, but for the, uh, on the other hand, uh, the free floating would be more adaptable to the needs of the users. So malaki yung effect niya sa uptake, uh, although lesser yung security, tsaka more complex to manage. And in between, depende po sa modality, meron din parang geofenced models, uh, na meron very, very specific sites, for example, within the urban area where you would be able to, to park uh, and operate. Uh, and these would be monitored through the sensors that are included in the vehicles. So what would this mean in terms of charging consideration? So geofence plus charging integrated into the station. So, parang ganito po, ano? so within that area, you would have the, the, the charging stations, for, for example, for, for e-bicycle sharing systems. Um, dito ipapark yung, yung ating mga um, electric bikes that are being shared. Meron din operator-led um, charging concepts. So it could be as part of the uh, uh, collection redistribution processes for these types of e-bikes if it's a free-floating system. Because if it's free-floating, users can leave them anywhere. Um, but somehow these need to be charged. So it's either the operators take them back or depende, baka may pwede rin operator-led battery swapping. So maybe for the mopeds, ganyan yung pwede mangyari. That the operators would monitor the, the state of charge, and if they see that the vehicle is uh, out of battery, they can go there and change the battery. Meron din pong gig economy ito, very uh, popular, I think, uh, especially sa US, yung kanilang, uh, I think, bird yung, yung bird and lime, if I'm not mistaken. So, they provide um, parang um, informal uh, employment opportunities. So yung mga, you can sign up as a, as a charger. Parang ganyan, ano? So your task is to locate the, the vehicles, bring them back. If you have a van, bring them back to your, your own house, or, um, and then you charge it. So you apply for, for that certain um, gig. So uh, yan po yung pwedeng isang modality. Yung isang concept naman nagiging uh, popular then user engagement, yung users mismo uh, that they can be incentivized. For example, if you use the e-scooter, yung kick scooter, you can take the battery out, you go to uh, the shop where they integrate the charging equipment, um, and then you get a certain discount uh, for your ride, for example. So, in integrate yung, yung charging points dun sa, for example, yung mga, mga shops natin. I think this one is, I took this from here. Um, because they're doing this model currently, they're proper, pro proliferating it uh, globally. Um, yeah, so I'll just now go through some of the potential impacts, um, uh, different impacts. Uh, urban space, so depend po, it could actually, um, in, in theoretically, um, may uh, positive, total positive impact siya if, if would, it would really take away uh, the mindset from ownership of vehicles towards shared resources, so lalo na lalo na sa parking spaces. Uh, pero depende rin po yan ano, kung anong type ng NMS yung gagawin or shared mobility. Um, uh, lalo na yung nakita natin again in terms of the 
the ride-hailing, ride-sharing types of models, baka iba rin po yung epekto sa ating uh, sistema. Um, in terms of uh, air pollutant greenhouse gas emissions, again, theoretically, mas maganda siya, lalo na pag electric, we don't have uh, direct uh, pit tailpipe emissions. Um, uh, malaki yung advantage ng ating maliliit na electric vehicles in terms of actual uh, CO2 and also wala siyang tailpipe directly. So, um, but again, maximizing these in terms of um, assisting the modal ship shift to, to, to public transportation, to our mass public transportation, and uh, as well as uh, aiding you move away from the mindset of uh, vehicle ownership towards shared resources. Um, yeah, there are some other issues. Panggitin ko lang yung mga deadheading. Uh, deadheading, ito po yung um, additional vehicle activity, for example, na walang, wala namang laman. Nangyari yung pag-ikot ng mga ride-hailing uh, services just to, to, to you know, uh, in standby for, for, for passengers. And in some cases, for example, yung pinakita ko kanina yung, yung e-bike sharing systems na yung sa redistribution um, depende kung ano yung gagamitin na sasakyan. Yung mga van, for example, ano ba yun? Parang diesel vans ba yun? Or trucks na uh, potentially uh, baka in overall makadagdag din sa emissions. Ano? Uh, mode shifts uh, again um, the 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 impacts could be you know uh, could differ so I just took some examples in in terms of how some of these things or some of the shared services can actually take away um, trips uh, from other modes of transport and in some cases they could actually take away significantly from from uh, public uh, public transport as well as walking and cycling so depend again po sa how these are being integrated uh, very similarly sa bike sharing, ganun din yung ating main points. Um, it could actually take away yung gusto natin mangyari to, to assist uh, uh, your, uh, people to use more public transport. It might not be the case in certain cases kasi baka directly mas, mas mag-take away pa sila ng, ng, uh, ng trips. Um, overall resources depend on uh, overall uh, um, supply and demand considerations. But again, I just wanted to to um, point this out now there had in, in the recent past maraming um, especially in china there had been a lot of dumping for example of um, e-bikes uh, due to different factors means and it's just uh, a mismatch between what was envisioned in terms of the demand and what was supplied for example but essentially theoretically um, we would uh, reduce overall resource um, utilization because of the shared nature of these uh, systems Quality of life, um, supposedly, we can expand the coverage of services, uh, transportation services, increase overall quality of service and livability, uh, again, depending on the integration, uh, but we should be reminded that the direction and the magnitude of the impacts uh, may be different depending on the application. Um, in terms of access, uh, could have the potential for improving overall access to different types of activities and opportunities by complementing um, overall transport networks. But it can also potentially widen the gap, lalo na um, kung i-take into consideration natin yung mga digitally challenged or those population segments that would not have the ability to access the platforms. And uh, maybe in the longer term, yung, yung mindset towards uh, uh, integrating in the uh, longer term planning, um, just to consider that. And in terms of responses, um, I've also talked about some of these things during the presentation the other day, um, but I uh, just wanted to um, highlight again that there are different responses uh, um, that are being taken in terms of um, putting regulations, rules for the users, so age restrictions, helmet use, occupancy, um, yung pinak operations bawal mag electronic device or may hawak na package, for example, if you're using uh, electric scooters or your electric uh, uh, bike uh, shared systems. Uh, pwede on the equipment uh, in terms of uh, regulations na dapat standards compliant. Merong accessories. Um, um, merong, yeah, yung mga front lights, rear lights, reflector requirements, etc. Uh, it could also be in terms of uh, operations. So where, where do you, uh, where, when, and how do you use uh, the, the devices? Um, so basic concepts dapat, you know, pedestrian safety first, uh, um, and then you consider, depending on situ situation, uh, whether it should be operated, you know, where in, in, in the network, or do you provide separate lanes for these things? Um, and also in terms of parking, uh, basic rules, wala dapat obstruction, walang encroachment, 
uh, from the other, uh, especially dun sa priority modes natin, uh, pedestrians and cyclists. Our responses, uh, responsibilities, ito, I just took this from um, the uh, city of Brussels because um, what they've done there was to have a mix of uh, um, parang, uh, regulations based and free market type of uh, um, models. But in, in terms of the coordination, this is the thing that they were um, um, highlighting that um, they wanted to provide a single point of contact for everything that's um, um, related to, to managing and regulating these types of uh, shared systems. Kasi nga maraming mga emergent na mga uh, issues na lumalabas. So they, they uh, put up this uh, specific coordination body that would handle the inquiries and the dialogues with the different stakeholders and operators. Um, in terms of data, siguro ang... Uh, um, ang, a key highlight lang po dito that uh, the the shared uh, operators, uh, shared mobility operators, sharing mobility operators globally, um, there are several of them which have uh, supported the uh, specific standards and in terms of um, providing um, the data, uh, they support the provision of the data to the local authorities. So, for example, in yung MDS uh, standard, uh, I think micromobility data standard, and then there's also something that's called the general bike feed specifications, GPFS. Uh, uh, um, these things, LGUs or local governments, depend po later on in the actual regulations natin, but hopefully um, ang suggestion po is to, to have this uh, open data standards approach and that uh, anonymized data can be shared directly to the LGUs so that they can use this for better integrating the, the, the shared systems later on and makatulong then for wider planning purposes. So pwede nyo hong hingin yan uh, kung meron lalapit na mga uh, mobility, shared mobility providers. Um, yeah. Okay, very similar message from, from Finland and the United Kingdom. Um, that the data must be shared and um, must adopt open data standards. Um, in terms of integration with mobility plans, in the case of uh, in California, and, and the, the way they, they approach the planning for the uh, shared e-scooter systems, so they were talking to the operators, and they integrated the plans based on the results of their um, air quality management, or I think not just EI, but uh, yung, yung kanilang dispersion studies uh, where they found um, high air pollution parang, uh, red zones as well as yung, yung low access zones. So yung walang masyadong uh, access yung mga residente towards the nearest public stations. Those were the, the areas that they said to the operators, okay, these are the areas which you should prioritize in terms of putting up your stations. So these are the kinds of uh, kind of integration uh, mechanisms that uh, potentially um, our own LGUs later can also uh, look into um, in terms of uh, uh, proliferating these types of uh, services. Um, meron din pong <clears throat> responses that relates directly to the operators. Uh, Banggitin ko lang yung ilan. So in terms of um, ihingi ng uh, business plan, detailed business plans in terms of the devices, in terms of the payments, in terms of the, the maintenance plans, right away, protections, etc. Um, yung iba po nang ihingi ng specific uh, uh, provisions in terms of insurance and indemnification kasi uh, yung, yung malaking issue din yan, yung safety, you know? Sino bang merong uh, pananagutan dun sa mga users? So in some cases, these are um, being um, spelled out in the contracts with the service providers. And the thirdly, but not last, but uh, uh, maintenance of service quality, so maintenance agreements, uh, compliance to removal requirements kung merong mga uh, devices that would be in certain areas na hindi siya uh, supposed to tinandun. So, uh, kailangan nakalagay yun sa kontrata with the operators. Um, just to put this into uh, um, uh, our ano rin, parang, uh, consciousness, yung in pricing, um, there could be some issues in terms of the um, clarity in terms of the pricing, particularly in terms of the the peak hour uh, charges, for example. So um, maybe not, uh, these might not be within the concern of the LGUs, but I just wanted to also mention this. For example, in India, they were able to at least put some guidelines for the, uh, what they call the aggregators uh, of these uh, different types of services. 
Um, so yun po, siguro in terms of uh, parting insights uh, based on the presentation, um, hopefully, um, I think since majority or, or a lot of these uh, concepts are still emerging within the, uh, the context of the Philippines, hopefully merong magkaroon ng uh, active mechanisms for engaging the LGUs in the discussions. Um, because, um, yeah, um, malaking bagay yung pag-localize kasi nung mga uh, shared services. It would be good to, to have the LGUs there as well as, as, well as the other stakeholders uh, and the operators as well. Um, again, a strive for integrating uh, shared e-mobility services to longer-term planning. Uh, again, complementing public transport, active mobility. And maybe in the in the shorter term, um, if this can be uh, figured out, at least uh, right now in the local transport route planning or in the wider transport and land use plans, strong considerations for shared mobility services uh, operations on local environments. So yung mga LGUs dito pwedeng mag, mag uh, conceptualize ng mga uh, localized schools and where, when, who, how. Um, Ngayong wala pa masyado, but uh, potentially within the near future magpo-proliferate kasi itong mga, mga services na ganito. Um, engage with the incoming shared mobility providers, particularly in terms of data sharing, uh, which hopefully um, some uh, mechanisms can be uh, spelled out for the LGUs and their authority in terms of uh, probably mandating something like this with the operators that would be operating locally. And uh, as mentioned also during the other day, a lot of uh, these procedural financial instruments uh, potentially uh, providing uh, incentives or or also spelling out some disin disincentives or penalties for you know certain, um, let's say, risks and violations um, permitting um, or it could be in terms of uh, providing some sort of other uh, support, no? local support. And finally, uh, look into other uh, potential applications to maximize the features of such systems, um, like in, in potential applications in terms of um, supporting urban freight uh, flows, um, lalo na sa, sa atin, wala pa masyadong um, concepts aside from the ones that are uh, being implemented by, um, you know, um, ating mga uh, uh, last mile delivery uh, companies right now, but there could be a lot of different uh, concepts as enabled by these uh, innovations in technology, in the vehicle technology, digital technologies, and the, the business models. So I think with that, oh, I just wanted to promote uh, this uh, website that we have. Um, we recently announced this, actually this week lang po. Um, um, this is a direct product of the uh, Solutions Plus project in coordination with the Global Environment Facility supported uh, Jeff 7 um, project, global e-mobility project that is also being led by our uh, uh, UN environment program. Uh, you can check the website. We have uploaded uh, um, for now, I think more than 100 tools already uh, that you can check out in relation to e-mobility, but we would, yeah, this is just the first stage. So um, we would be constantly updating, up, uh, uploading uh, materials um, into the immobility.tools website. So uh, yeah, just visit the website and uh, um, let us also know what you what you think the the, the toolkit there. So maraming salamat po uh, for, for your patience and uh, for listening. Thank you.